In my previous video, I mentioned that training negatives for your first one-arm pull-up is a terrible idea. And unsurprisingly, a lot of people can't wait to tell me how wrong I was in the comments section. Most of the time, YouTubers treat YouTube as a crowd-pleasing business. So even when they see something wrong, they will be diplomatic about it and try not to rock the boat. But hey, guess what? I'm here to shake things up in order to make the world a better place. First, the risk of injury is too high. People who advocate negatives often cite that your muscles are stronger during the eccentric movement than during the concentric movement. First of all, this is not even true for all cases. If this were true, when I learned the concentric part of the slow muscle up, the eccentric part of the slow muscle up should have been automatic. But in fact, it wasn't. It took me a few additional days to learn the eccentric part of the slow muscle up in order to complete the rep. But since we are talking about the one arm pull up, I can agree that this statement should be true. The problem is that you have zero idea how much stronger you are in the negative. There are websites that claim a dubious 1.75 times stronger in the eccentric. And there are people in the comments section claiming an even more dubious 2 times stronger in the eccentric. However, I guarantee you that if I'm in the position of the top of the warm pull up, and then my wife jumps onto my back to make the load 1.77 times, there will be zero chance I can control it on the way down. And with 1.77 times body weight free falling, we are heading for an irreversible shoulder injury. I have browsed through research papers and none of them gives a concrete number of how much stronger we are in the negatives. And I think it's precisely because it varies from person to person. It's also absolutely not worth the risk to find out about it. Let's say you can't do the warm pull up yet because you are only capable of pulling 80% body weight. You think you can start training negatives with 100% body weight. But in reality, your body is only 10% stronger in negatives. You attempt a negative and realize that you can't control it. Then what do you do? I'm going to demonstrate with two arms here because I don't want to injure myself. Option 1. Free fall onto your shoulders and pray that your shoulders can take the force without getting injured. Option 2. Let go of your arms from the bar and pray that when your arms go abruptly from max tension to zero tension, nothing will get injured. That's it. There is no option 3. Whereas, if you train with a resistant band and choose a band that's too light for you to go up, nothing bad will be going to happen. Just switch to a heavier resistance band and continue training. Second, you think you are learning the movement, but you aren't. There is a 99% chance that your starting position of the negative on top of the bar is going to be different from the position when you actually do the one-arm pull-up to come up to the bar. Your head position will be different. Your shoulder position is going to be different. Your elbow position is going to be different too. You will have zero idea what optimal placement is for your head, shoulders, and elbows for your body type when you perform the one-arm pull-up. Mimicking some YouTube expert's starting position on the top of the bar isn't going to work for your body type either. When we talk about max effort performance, all the subtle positioning matters. Of course, if you are way stronger, the positioning doesn't matter. It's just like I can do regular pull-ups no matter where I position my head, shoulders, and elbows. But for beginners who are working on their first pull-up, guess what? All the subtle optimal positioning matters. Furthermore, if you can't even get the starting position right, of course you aren't going to get the body path right either. So no, you aren't learning the movement with the negatives. Here are my recommendations of the right approaches to train negatives. First, only train negatives with the same load as your current concentric load. In this situation, there's no guessing. You are guaranteed to be able to perform the negative unless you are working on something like the slow muscle up. When you go up with a resistant band that allows you to go up, lower yourself down with control instead of letting go and jumping off. This avoids your muscles from going abruptly from max tension to zero tension and thus prevents related injuries. Additionally, you can still gain the clean abstract benefits that negatives supposedly provide like, you know, better muscle connection, improved muscle tissues, better neurological learning, stuff like that which I'm unable to prove or disprove whether it's valid or not. Additionally, it is also okay to try negatives to get a rough idea of a movement for exercises that have zero risk of injury. For example, the press handstand negative. 
If you lose control and your feet hit the ground, nothing bad will happen. Another example is the front lever negative. If you are attempting the front lever, your shoulders should be in a state where you are able to handle a free falling body weight with both shoulders in case you lose control. In conclusion, I will take a rep that is 90% body weight going up and then 90% body weight coming down over a rep that is 100% body weight coming down every single day. I can also imagine someone commenting, with a resistance band, the positions of the head, shoulders, and elbows will also be different compared to those in the real one arm pull up. Yes, I agree. But to me, it's pretty obvious that the positioning of the band assisted one arm pull up is closer to that of the real one arm pull up. If that's still not obvious to you, at least you should agree that the band assisted one arm pull up moves in the same direction as the real one arm pull up, and the negative moves in a complete opposite direction. Therefore, obviously, for the sake of learning the movement, the band assisted one arm pull up is far superior to negatives. Alright guys, that's it for the video and I hope you are convinced that training body weight negatives for your first warm pull up is a terrible idea. If you're still not convinced, hey, best of luck to your shoulders. Make sure to like, subscribe and check out my website geekclimber.com. See you in the next video.